Hi there, my name is Kirk White. I first became involved with Dr. Clark's work about 10 years ago. Uh, somebody handed me one of her books, it said The Cure for All Diseases. I thought, gee, that's a pretty bold statement, I don't think so. But after studying the book for some months, I decided it was really good information. There's a lot of science in it anybody could use. She says that if you put deodorant under your arm, in two minutes you can find aluminum in your brain. And if you put deodorant under your arm, in two minutes you can find propyl alcohol in your liver with a little device she invented that she calls a synchrometer. It's made with Radio Shack parts, about $60 worth of parts. The book is uh, an incredible piece of information and uh, really worth reading, and thank you for buying the book you bought. Uh, I, I worked with Dr. Clark now about five years as an understudy, as an unpaid understudy, and I find it's most fascinating. She's without question one of the most brilliant minds on the planet. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you can uh, gain a lot of information for yourself, and maybe you can save a life. Thank you so much. By the way, Dr. Clark says, you can copy this and give it to as many friends as you like. Uh, it may save a lot of lives. Thank yeah. you. Morning, Dr. Clark. How are you? Good morning. Fine. <laughs> uh, so this does look for all the world like a worm, if only I had never seen one like this before. And uh, without staining it, you can't um, get a better idea. But it has to be the plant or animal. So uh, I first thing that I would check for is plant food residue in other words uh -huh. and if anything it could come from uh, say uh, um, a banana or plantain which we use in our diet so that would be the first thing I would test and mm -hmm. use a banana so I would test that first and that's it what do you know that that was a positive indication yeah. from the synchrometer Usually it doesn't go that fast because I, I, I have to guess what the possibilities are. I can't go through a long list. Uh, maybe sometime in the future that, that can be done. The, the circuitry is already available to where I wouldn't have to have the actual item uh, for testing. Um, but uh, I'm still at the manual stage and I prefer it that way. But actually, you could have made a, a water copy of that. Yes, I could and, have. Uh, <clears throat> and also, uh, it would distinguish between uh, banana and plantains. or, or uh, So it, it has very acute sensitivity to differences, little differences. Mm -hmm. Now, if you weren't so, so conscious of all of the things going on and so adept at figuring out what something might be first knowing the food and the patients <clears throat> what else would you have checked for that uh, if i if, it, if i couldn't find uh, it to be a food residue i would uh, go through all my parasite collection i i have about 50 or 60 parasites and i would go through them even if it didn't look like it because, um, well, that's just my procedure in order not to miss anything. And I have those on slides, like slides like this, microscope slides. So if this has uh, a parasite on it or part of, part of a parasite, uh, it would be positive if, that was, if it was that parasite. Certainly, yeah. Well, that's a phenomenal approach. and. Uh it's interesting how someone can take uh, a totally unknown substance in a matter of minutes, determine whether it's plant or animal, and then go right down the chain of parasites and determine what parasite it would be. There are errors you do have to look out for because nothing comes from the toilet bowl purely clean and <laughs> uncontaminated with other parasites. Uh -huh. So that's something to watch for and to, we, we need to clean this up, but this was, I think, this is already in formaldehyde, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so yeah. it has been cleaned up because right. it looked so much like a parasite that 
it was worth doing that cleanup. And actually with that sample you might be able to determine if asterisk was in the system of the patient? Yes. Because it would perhaps be attached or be involved there? Uh, yes, you could. Even, even Fasciolopsis busci or some yes. of the other parasites? Yes, you could do that. <laughs> yes. At any rate, I think that's a worthwhile experiment. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello there again. Hello. Hey, I, I just love to come in and interrupt you when you're doing things and stick a camera in your face and say, hey, what are you doing, you know? And uh, I had to leave a moment ago because I'd been fooling with formaldehyde and didn't have any voice left. Well, what is, what's the antidote for formaldehyde, just uh, if you happen to Sustain know? Sustain and taurine. Sustain and taurine? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Very interesting. So interesting. you would take maybe one capsule <clears throat> of either one or both. Uh-huh. Interesting. Well, I drank some it's water. It's quite and bad it just, for you. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly yeah. for lungs. Yeah. Well, that was interesting just to... I have to remember now not to prepare things with formaldehyde before I try to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, and a person shouldn't mm -hmm. have any open formaldehyde in the house. Of course, we yeah. have it all the time in other forms. It's a standard air pollutant that we test for. Uh -huh. It's in my set of air pollutants that we test for mm -hmm. um, because there's formaldehyde in foam bedding, formaldehyde in your new clothing that has, if it has never been washed or dry cleaned, mm -hmm. uh, and formaldehyde coming maybe from your cupboards if they're mm -hmm. new wood, some kind of paneling. So the glue that they would use on the paneling and Possibly. the glue they lose to use to put the tile down, the back of carpets, uh, the list Maybe. would perhaps go on. I don't, I don't know all the, all the places, but, uh, yeah. but people with, with lung cancer usually have an excessive amount of, uh, of lung, uh, of air pollutants uh -huh. that, that, that bother the lung, cause the lung to be inflamed. Mm -hmm including radon, including vanadium yes. from the gas stove and yes. radon from the earth. And yes. Well, tell That's me right. what you're doing here. What? Uh, the, uh, we have um, a patient with, an, with a uh, cancer in two places, uh, which is uh, so unusual uh, to have a cancer occurring on the face and in the lower abdomen, and, and nowhere else. I thought this must be coming from her teeth, but she has full dentures, and uh, that would then be a surprise since it's not uh, coming from uh, tooth fillings. So I'm checking her dentures to see if they're radioactive. Uh, and you can see what I'm testing for. This is just the name of the, the person. I have them in a little bit of well water or any kind of water because uh, even if the water might have some copper or lead in it from the water pipes, that's not going to disturb the test. I'm not looking for copper or lead. I'm looking for polonium, which is the radioactive element causing cancer, but it's not the only thing the, the polonium is complex to cerium, cerium being a lanthanide. But radioactive things from the earth, uh, uh, mainly the radon series, and other things coming up from the uranium down below uh, the earth, uh, those things react with each other. The lanthanides and the radioactive elements come up in, in the same space because they come up from the uranium rocks that are under the surface of the earth. And polonium and cerium are extremely reactive and they, re they react with each other immediately so that you get this little polonium-cerium complex. And you'll see that here I'm testing for polonium um, in this uh, denture that's in a little bit of water in a plastic bag.